Oh, Joe, will he ever learn? <laughs> I hope they keep this toxic show forever. We need like 10 seasons. I'm here for it. Hey guys, welcome back to Creator Best Life for a brand new video. Today we are doing another TV show review and this time it is You Season 4. As all of you probably know, I have a Penn Badgley obsession, AU obsession, and I was so excited to watch the first half of Season 4. So let's get into it. So last season on You, we watched him kill Love, abandon his son Henry for his protection, and also he is now searching for Marianne, who was his last love interest, and he followed her to Paris. So now our question for season four is, what the heck is Joe doing now? All right, let me put on my glasses so that I can read to you guys details about each character. <clears throat> So here's the character breakdown for season four of you. Obviously we have Penn Badgley, he is our main character, Joe Goldberg, but he is now living as a university English professor named Jonathan Moore. We also have Marion Bellamy. We know Marion from season three. She was the librarian manager of the library, I recall. <laughs> She's his previous love interest who he has followed to Paris, now London, and she is back at least for the first episode and a couple of, you know, little cameos here and there. So we'll see if she's in the second half, but in the first half, she was in it. Next we have Kate, who is Joe's new love interest. She is dating another character on the show and she is a cold hearted gallery, art gallery manager. Next we have Lady Phoebe, who is a very high profile socialite. She comes from a rich family who is also really close friends with Kate. We also have the character of Nadia, who is a student in Jonathan Moore, Joe Goldberg's English class. Next we have Reese Montrose, who is the author of a memoir that lifted him out of poverty. He befriends Joe and he has this very anti aristocratic vibe about him even though he's obviously got a lot of money and he's thinking about running for mayor and it's just he's an interesting character I think y'all will like him and finally we have Adam Pratt who is a rich American expatriate and he's also dating Phoebe and he's the rich son of some kind of prominent East Coast family so they got money and we also have, as usual, a lot of recurring characters. Some live, some die. They're all interesting pieces of the puzzle. Okay, let's get into this recap. Okay, so for theme, I feel like throughout the entire show, Joe is constantly in a battle with his morality, which is very interesting. Um, and I guess maybe some sociopaths do have internal battles with morality. I know that they like to do that a lot with different TV shows like Dexter and what other show? I did not finish Dahmer, so I don't know if that's, you know, one of those. And I don't remember if he's a psychopath or a sociopath, but I do know that Dexter was a sociopath. And so it's very interesting how they depict characters that are battling with their own morality. Um, and justifying their actions. So I have noticed that in particular, the theme for this season is redemption. He's constantly trying to figure out if, you know, he can save his soul for lack of a better, you know, way of phrasing it. He, he keeps saying that he doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to kill people. And that was the last time we're not doing this again. And so it's very interesting how they have continued to bring up this theme of redemption into his life. And he's trying to, you know, um, is the phrase make penance, get penance um, for, he, he's trying to atone for his sins basically. And so this season has been very interesting in the way that he's trying very hard not to kill anyone again. So it's just amazing like how the first episode starts out with him <laughs> thinking that he has killed somebody. So episode one, we start out with Pin Batch. Pin Badgley, oh my gosh. His character's name is Joe. Episode one, we start out with Joe. He is now in London. He had tracked Marianne all the way to Paris and now he's in London. So he's searching for her. He sees her in this market and he follows her she runs and he follows her to this old warehouse and they have a conversation because well 
conversation because she feels attacked because she knows who he truly is. Love told her who he, who he is. So now she's afraid of him. She pulls a knife on him and she calls him a murderer. And he's taken aback by it because now he's like, wow, someone else has said it again. I really, really love Marianne. So I don't want her to ever think that I'm a murderer. So he lets her go. I'm trying to prove her wrong. So that's how he starts the episode. He starts the season trying to prove her, everyone else wrong. So after that, we see that he's being followed. So that's a telltale sign that something is weird, something is eerie. This person tracks him down. He's sitting in a coffee shop and it turns out to be Elliot, who is the PI of Love Quinn's father. So we know Love is dead but her parents, you know, come from money and Joe has obviously emptied their bank account, so he's got all of Love's money. So Elliot is hired to find Joe, kill Joe, get rid of Joe. And so he actually wants to have a new life to start over for himself. So he makes a deal, really he's extorting Joe out of Love's money to get rid of Marianne so that all the loose ends are tied up and that way, he can give Joe his own new identity, which will now be Jonathan Moore, an English professor at a local university. And then Joe can, you know, move on with his life and Elliot can move on with his life as usual. So Joe follows Marianne and he does not want to kill her. He doesn't. So he stages it where he snatches her necklace and takes a picture of it, sends it to Elliot. So Elliot thinks that, you know, it's done. Thinks that he has killed Marianne. Marianne has carried on to go find her daughter back in Paris. Now we cut to Joe living as Jonathan Moore as his English professor at the college and he's got this new annoyance who is another co-worker which is another professor at the college named Malcolm. Malcolm is dating this woman named Kate who ends up being Joe's new love interest and Malcolm is really Malcolm is really rich he's super annoying he's kind of a dick and so obviously Joe hates him <laughs> because Joe has a very much eat the rich kind of personality so he's over that but Malcolm you know won't leave him alone Malcolm lives across the street from Joe Joe peeks in on them all the time because the windows are already the windows are always open and I don't know what it is maybe it's because people think in high rises other people can't see them but Joe's always got the window open, they've always got the window open, and he's always lurking in on them. Nothing out of character for him. So Joe ends up having this interest in Kate because he's always watching her and he's like, oh, Malcolm must be a terrible boyfriend because Malcolm's never there with her and this and that. And so he happens to see Kate around town. These two muggers come out and they attack her. So Joe's like, I can't do this, I don't wanna get involved naturally he gets involved so he saves her from the muggers and she wants to tell you know call the cops and report it and yada yada he's like if you tell the cops please don't say nothing <laughs> about me because obviously he wants to keep his own i you know his new identity as jonathan moore obviously she tells malcolm about it malcolm invites joe to the sundry house which is this elite club specifically for the aristocrats of the town so it's everyone who's anybody is there. Joe goes there, he feels like a fish out of water per usual, he doesn't have money. They make jokes about his clothes, his hair, all the jazz. And so there he meets this character, Reese, right? Who is gonna be mayor. He has chats with him and gets to know him a little bit. They kind of, you know, form this little bond because they both hate the rich, <laughs> basically. Which is kind of ironic because like Reese is a part of it. So Joe is questioning like, Reese's motives and then he's also wondering like okay but these are your friends so it's like I don't understand they all happen to go to Oxford together which is how they met so he's like yeah I want to continue to be friends with them and that's fine Joe's like okay fine but it is what it is so Joe gets really really drunk at this party and Malcolm takes him home lays him on the couch he's all set to go Joe wakes up the next morning and Malcolm is stabbed to death on his dining room table. Now Joe thinks that he has committed this murder for what, for why? He wants to be with Kate, he doesn't understand. So he's just like, okay, I clearly did this even though I've been trying really, really hard not to do this, not to get involved, but now I gotta get rid of this body. Joe gets rid of this body 
the way that he normally does. He figures it out. Kate, the next day, invites him to a party. Now she's, you know, still looking for Malcolm because, you know, he didn't come home the night before after he dropped him off. And so she thinks maybe he's working or like just off doing something, you know, whatever rich people do. And so <laughs> he's obviously missed work and everything, but she invited Joe to dinner. So Joe goes to dinner with all of these rich people, all of her friends and Malcolm's friends. And there he gets a random text, random anonymous text from the murderer of Malcolm. And now he realizes that he is being framed for Malcolm's murder. So now Joe goes on a man or woman hunt to figure out who is framing him. So that's how episode one ends and it was really really good i thoroughly enjoyed it and so episode two gets really interesting because now we are thrown into the world of who done it which is really great and they touch on it a little bit of how this is like a murder mystery type and that's how it felt at the dinner and at the end of episode one so that was really fun and i i just really enjoyed how they added a little bit different elements to this season so episode two, some time has gone by. Lady Phoebe has invited Joe to an art exhibit by Simon, who is another friend in the aristocratic circle that we met in episode one. Simon is the son of a billionaire. He's this like brooding artist. None of them are really nice people, but you know, it is what it is. In this episode, Joe breaks into Malcolm's office at work and finds a ledger of different bets that Malcolm has placed. And so he's trying to uncover like, what he's actually betting on is it horses it could be anything so he's trying to piece together everything to figure out malcolm's backstory and why someone might want to kill him so all the motive behind that and maybe that will help him figure out which one of his friends may have killed him because as the season goes on he tries to figure out what motive each person would have and he finds out bits and pieces that no one really liked malcolm so in this discovery on the ledger he pieces together that Adam Pratt, who is Lady Phoebe's boyfriend, is on the ledger in code and he follows him. Adam has, well, it's really Lady Phoebe's bodyguard, but he follows Adam around too to help. And so in Joe following him, he realizes that Adam has this fetish of being urinated on by service workers, apparently. And so he realizes that he has this weird kink that he's keeping from Lady Phoebe and he thought it was gonna be more than that but now it's like oh okay this guy's actually a little strange <laughs> but the bodyguard finds Joe being a peeping Tom on Adam and you know stops him from doing anything and steals money from him and threatens him and that's that with following Adam around for the day so at this exhibit Joe you know sees this girl um, who is about to create a scene at the art exhibit. So he tries to talk to Kate. Kate is very icy. She's like, I honestly don't know why you keep hanging around with my friends. I don't get it, which is kind of odd because she also invited him to dinner in the previous episode. So it's really, it, it's weird the back and forth that they have together and they continue to have that throughout the season until you know, they obviously have said. At the exhibit, this new character, a young woman, she causes a scene for Simon's exhibit. She throws red paint on it. Simon intercepts saying that it was meant to happen like this. That was part of the show and the exhibit. And so now he enlists Kate to figure out who this girl is and why she's doing it. So apparently it's revealed that Simon actually knows who this person is and Simon actually is a fraud. He is stealing art from lesser known people who obviously have zero money, they can't sue him or anything, and who's gonna believe them? So, this young woman is found by Joe and Kate. Joe helps Kate, per usual, and then they offer her money to basically go away and not say nothing. Joe does feel sorry for her, he really does. He always kind of, um, you know, helps the underdog, helps the younger person, which is one of his redeeming qualities, even though he is a complete psycho. So then Kate leaves him there because they get in an argument. <laughs> and now he has to find his way back. So 
he goes back to the exhibit because he's trying to figure out like who could be Malcolm's killer. And in the end, it ends up happening that Simon is killed and the cops are coming. Joe falls, falls asleep outside. He heads back in after the police get there to figure out who might have killed Simon. And he doesn't figure it out, but now he's got a few more details about it. He's like, could it have been the girl? Could it have been Kate? Like, who knew because he thought he was watching this whole time? So in a very poetic way, we see Simon has had his ear cut off. And now he has taken Simon off the list of suspects because he's clearly dead. So now what? He goes back home and finds newspaper clippings all over the wall in his apartment. And the person that is framing him has now finally figured out who he is. He or she threatens to expose Joe. One thing I forgot to mention because I talked about Simon's ear being taken was that Malcolm's body was also missing a finger. So that's really important for episode three because episode three starts out with Malcolm's finger, which has been taken by the murderer, has been submitted to the police. And now the killer has been dubbed the Ether Ridge Killer. So now that all of that has happened, Joe discovers that one of his really vocal students, Nadia, has been in a relationship in secret with Malcolm. So for me, I'm thinking, oh shoot, what if she did it because he didn't want to leave his wife or his girlfriend? I had no idea, <laughs> to be honest, because you know all things pointed to her. But um, then I started ruling her out. Next, we're at Simon's funeral, where now the murderer is extorting Joe, forcing him, blackmailing is the better word. He's blackmailing Joe to now kill Kate. Why would he want Kate dead? So in true Joe fashion, he follows Kate around so that he can protect her. And per usual, now she gets given in. She kind of likes Joe now. They have sex outside. She leads him to this garden and you realize that someone has been watching them. It happens to be Vic, the bodyguard of Lady Phoebe. So after that, we're at the next day, Joe follows Kate to the crypt where Malcolm is, and so she's paying her respect to Malcolm, and after she leaves, Victor comes to attack Joe. He finds Malcolm's ring on Joe, and it's revealed that in a previous scene, we saw someone bump into Joe. That was a moment where it was planted on Joe, and that's where Vic was able to find the ring. They tussle, they fight a little, and of course, Joe kills Vic, leaves him in the crypt. So at first, Joe was approaching this murderer all wrong, basically, in an, a you know defensive, aggressive way, but then he's like, this has to be a game, because why would this person just keep going back and forth with him? So he pretends to go along with the game, and he asks if the killer wants to meet with him. The killer agrees. So yeah, that episode ended with Joe talking to Reese after explaining you know, his alibi and what happened to the police. So in episode four, we start out with Joe having been invited to Lady Phoebe's family's country house for you know a little weekend party getaway type of situation. It's a lot of debauchery, <laughs> not gonna lie, but it looked like it was a good time for people that enjoy debauchery. So Joe goes there because one, he wants to protect Kate, and two, he really wants to figure out who this murderer is that is framing him. So there's a new character that is highlighted that we saw in, you know, a couple of the previous episodes is Gemma. Gemma is very nasty to the service workers around there and Joe notices and obviously hates her. And after that interaction, he sees everybody. There's bodyguards there that Kate is trying to avoid and we're trying to figure out like, what's her deal? What's that about? And so they all go inside and get ready for all the events for the day. So Joe is, you know, getting his stuff together and Phoebe invites him over to her room. Now mind you, this is Phoebe's family's home. So he's like, okay, cool, let's do it. She tries to seduce him. He turns her down, obviously. And she's like, well, what's wrong with me? And he's like, it's nothing wrong with you, but you should be with Adam. And she's like, well, Adam's been acting weird. And he tries to talk Adam up to her. And then she like chills down and he's obviously still keeping Adam secret from her. And he's like, just talk to him. You guys will be fine, blah, blah, blah. So she lets that go. So ironically enough, now Joe has this conversation with Adam. Adam seems to be confiding in Joe now, <laughs> which is very interesting. And he tells Joe that he wants to propose to Phoebe, partially because 
he wants to get rid of all the debt that he's in because he knows that his dad is not going to bail him out this time. And another fun part of this episode is we get to see more of the character Rold, which is another one of Kate's really good friends who happens to just not like Joe at all. And so I personally thought that Rold was the killer as well because of how, you know, mean he has been to Joe and he's just a nasty person anyway but now Joe figures out that Rold is obsessed with Kate he goes to Rold's room sees that Rold has all of these pictures of Kate and it shows just his obsession with her and he's like oh my goodness this person has got to be the murderer because he has motive it makes sense all of us were thinking it but Rold is also on to Joe so at dinner he has words with Joe because he sees Kate and Joe getting along Gemma notices it too so she ends up saying that Joe is probably the killer because he's the only new person everyone started dropping as soon as he started infiltrating their friend group and Rold obviously is like yeah he probably is later Kate confides in Joe telling him that she comes from a very rich family which he didn't know he assumed that she did not because you know she actually held down a job um, but obviously she hangs out with them because they're all rich and he's a wealthy businessman and the bodyguards that she wanted nothing to do with were her dad's bodyguards to keep her safe because all of her friends are dropping like flies and she obviously feels a disconnect from her dad because she revealed the dark stuff that he's done with his business and so she feels like she doesn't want anything to do with him and he's constantly trying to be a part of her life. Now that Joe's been confided in, he's like, I must be in love with Kate because why wouldn't I? I see how true of a person she is. <laughs> so after all of that, we have Rold inviting Joe into the room. They have words. He confronts Joe about possibly being the killer. And then he just tosses Joe out the window, like literally two, three flights. And so Joe is obviously injured and he says nothing because he really thinks that Rold is the killer. So he's just trying to figure out how he can get to Rold without other people being on to him about it and to keep his identity. So now as Joe is gathering himself after falling out of a window, he hears a scream, rushes back into the house because, you know, all the debauchery is happening. People don't really hear anything. And he goes back upstairs and finds Kate in her room and Gemma dead. Gemma has been stabbed and Kate pulls out the knife and now Joe's like, oh crap, it's gotta be Kate <laughs> because I was thinking it too. So obviously Joe wants to be the valiant knight in shining armor. He helps Kate get rid of the body even though he tells himself he doesn't want to do it. He even tells her, I don't think I want to do it. But he does it anyway because he wants to be the hero and he sees now that Kate didn't do it. So while Joe is helping Kate dispose of this body, she's obviously freaking out, but he's so calm and she's like, why are you so calm? And she's noticing that he really knows how to get rid of bodies well. And she's like, have you done this before? And he considers the question and he confides in her that he got rid of Malcolm's body and she's like, what? <laughs> and so he tells her that he's being framed for it and she chooses to believe him. Which is true, he was being framed, so he didn't lie about that part. He just lied about everything else. So to make life easier, Kate goes to tell Phoebe to get rid of the bodyguard so that, you know, they don't get in trouble for disposing of this body. And Rold ends up, you know, fronting off Joe in front of everybody and he attacks him. He ties him up and enlists the rest of the crew while Kate is confiding in Phoebe. And Phoebe, for some reason, is okay with it. I don't know why she was just so chill about it, but she was while Joe is being interrogated and accused. And all the people are still intoxicated. So they don't really care one way or another. They just want to blame him because the rest of the group is blaming him. So Rold very much so wants to kill Joe. For killing his friends but mainly just because Kate likes Joe so he gives Joe a head start in running away and Joe ends up in the woods while Rold is following him with a shotgun he ends up being attacked by Reese now Reese was supposed to have been gone on a trip and that's why he couldn't come to this excursion but now he discovers that Reese has kidnapped him put him in a barn and he is locked up with Rold. So they both have been captured. So in the dungeon, I said barn before, they're actually in the dungeon. <laughs> the barn is where they took Gemma's body. So in the dungeon, Reese confesses to everything. He wants to enlist Joe to join him. Joe refuses. So Reese leaves him, starts a fire in the barn, and Joe is trying to escape. 
Joe finally escapes and he tries to get out without Rold. Rold calls to him after he has just woken up and begs to be saved. Obviously, Joe saves him. They get out together and Kate has found them because she noticed that Roald had followed him and tried to kill him. So in that moment, no one else saw that the killer was Reese because he didn't want to be found out, obviously. And Joe does not want to be found out. He wants to continue to be Jonathan Moore. So he tells no one about Reese. And now Reese has officially submitted himself to be mayor once Joe and everyone else have gotten home. So no one has talked about any of the other things but now they're really trying to figure out how everyone is dying. And Joe is trying to figure out how he can get at Reese because Reese is making his life hell, but how can he get to Reese if Reese is about to have bodyguards as the mayor? So my thoughts for this season, Penn Badgley's acting is phenomenal per usual. Loved it. I also really enjoyed the twist because usually Joe is very obviously the murderer. Of course he killed one person. However, the fact that he's got like a copycat killer almost, and then he wants to be friends with Joe, so he's got this obsession with Joe, kind of like love. And so it's just interesting, he keeps coming toe to toe with other people similar to him. And I just love that they did it that way. And it wasn't so much about the love interest, more so about someone who is just super obsessed with him this time, which has been really, really fun. The shots are stunning. I loved it, it looked amazing and they just did such a phenomenal job just bringing everything to life like the lighting was it was just really great and i really just can't wait to see how they wrap up the season because i have a few questions to be perfectly honest like i said how does joe get reese because reese is now about to be mayor how will joe continue to kill people because he didn't kill that many people this season we're used to him dropping bodies okay so we want to know how he continues to kill people, how they're going to make him remember that, yes, you are a killer. You can't escape your true self. Where will he go next? Because if he gets found out at the end of this season, he's going to have to change his name entirely because it's too much drama surrounding Jonathan Moore. And so what new country is he going to go to? Because he can't come back to America. He can't. So I, I want to see him in like south africa or something or i don't know that'll be very very interesting are they going to bring marianne back because we know that she's not dead that'll be an interesting twist and it's also funny that they have dropped the trailer for part two so we see love has made an appearance taunting him we know she's dead so there's no way she could have survived after seeing that explosion at the house but she could be but I think she's taunting him so it's like how many more people from his past are going to continue to resurface that's going to be a lot of fun and last but not least will joe join reese and have this sociopathic bond like he chose not to have with love because he could have done that but he didn't want to he thought she was crazy which is very interesting considering that he's actually the crazy one well everybody's crazy to be perfectly honest everybody in this show is crazy they all need therapy and they probably need to be in a straight jacket somewhere. I'm not gonna lie. But I really wanna see if he tries to have this bond with Reese, like this brotherhood. I think it would be fun to see if he actually, you know, enlists a friend in this, but it ends up going awry. But, you know, we saw how trash it got in the first episode of season three with love killing another love interest of his. So we'll never know. So, all in all, to say that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the first half of season four and I encourage you guys to watch it because the second half of season four is coming out on March 9th. I cannot wait and I know that it's going to be a fun ride and I hope that it is renewed for a fifth season because they bring us on such a wild ride and it is just so much fun and I can't wait to see how they you know I don't want to say top themselves because it's unfair to hold someone to that standard, but I do want to see what new ways that they're going to tell this story because it's never stale. I saw some other reviews where people were saying it should probably end at season four because he's not killing people, but I really believe that they're going to continue to top themselves and continue to bring all the murder and the psychological thrilling moments that we have gotten accustomed to. So once again, I'm asking you guys to like this if you enjoy watching my review videos. They are so much fun to make. 
I love watching TV, I love watching movies, and if I can share my love with you guys, all the more better. Please give me a comment down below if you enjoyed it. What other stuff do you want me to review? More TV shows, more movies, a specific genre. I'll do all of that because I want to try different things out, have a good time, and share it with you guys. And don't forget to share with a friend if they enjoy it. Until next time, guys. Bye.